Well, hi, this is Daryl Davis uh, to talk to you about the iBuyer, the worst thing to happen to homeowners. Now, we, we recorded this for our power agents. Our power agents are <clears throat> real estate agents that are in our coaching membership program. But there, this is not, I haven't copyrighted this because I think it's important that if we want to share this with as many people as possible, if you know of an agent in your marketplace that's dealing with this iBuyer thing and you think this is going to help them, please, please share this. What I'm going to do in the next hour is give you some background on what this iBuyer talk is, how what this disrupting thing is, uh, how, what to do about it. But most of it, I'm going to use the websites from the three most popular <clears throat> companies out there right now and show you how, why this is the worst thing to happen uh, for homeowners. Uh, these are the three top companies, Open Door, OfferPad, and Zillow Offer is actually what it's called. And um, <clears throat> what, what we're noticing is that this has been growing in popularity in the cities where there's a lot of uh, similar homes. Like a developer went in, built uh, a whole subdivision, and they're pretty much all the same. It makes it easier for an investor to, based on comps uh, to not actually physically have to see the property to do it on the computer when you ha don't have a lot of unique, unique homes. So that's what we're finding. And uh, the biggest leader at the time of this recording is uh, Phoenix with uh, a 4% market share. And so it's not a national thing, but it, you know, it's, there's a lot of buzz. This is definitely a disruptor. Okay. So let me start off just telling you what I think as a real estate agent, what you can do, uh, if this is a concern in your marketplace, again, it's not a national thing, but in certain cities, it's a big concern for agents. Be prepared on a listing point. I promise you by the time we're done on this presentation in an hour, you're going to be so prepared. You can pull whatever you want from this recording uh, to use on listing points. But here's the most important thing is educating your local homeowners. My research has shown that the, the homeowners that actually sell to one of these iBuyer companies are homeowners that actually never talk to a real estate agent. Like this was the first stop. And the problem with that is they don't, they didn't realize that they weren't getting a horrible deal. So the more your homeowners in your marketplace know the truth about what this is, the, the, once you see what I'm about to show you, the, the, no homeowner in their right mind would actually sell to an iBuyer, okay? I, I can't really think of any reason why they would unless they want to, they're okay with losing tens of thousands of dollars. So what you can do after this um, presentation is, Think about concentrated social media. What I mean, don't do uh, social media all over the place. If there's a closed uh, Facebook groups, for example, in your community, uh, start posting about the concern of iBuyer uh, in your marketplace. Door knock, like, you know, when uh, the people are running for Congress or there's a bill trying to get passed and the people walk around with those clipboards and they're saying, hi, I'm representing the uh, senator, blah, blah. And there's a real concern and we're signing a petition about it. Da, 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 da. Like kind of take that, take it to the streets, knocking on the doors, letting homeowners know you're going to have a meeting or hand them informational brochure about why this is the worst thing to happen. In other words, we got to get to the homeowners before they get to these companies. Um, if you do a mailing directing homeowners to get more information about this and you have it on a web page, um, if, if taking any parts of the video helps you do that. But I think the best thing that you can do, it's kind of a, 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 um, a community effort here, a team effort amongst real estate agents. If you're on the education committee, talk to your board about having uh, inviting the pu general public and get the board behind it and then have all the members of the board to promote an event where you're going to educate all homeowners about this 
this, what I think is, if you think it's a horrible thing and um, you can, if your board can't handle all the people, rent out a movie theater, there's a certain amount of cool marketing about that. Now, I just want, let me give you some background, show you what's happening here. So Open Door, um, in uh, March, this came out in the Wall Street Journal. They got uh, an influx of cash of $200 million. At the time, that gave the evaluation, meaning this is what the company would be worth, is $2 billion. Even though on the books they weren't worth $2 billion, investors were throwing so much money into this in anticipation that this is like the next best thing. Like this is, the, this is a ground floor opportunity for investors to get in because they're going to make a ton of money. So this is why it's getting a lot of attention. June, um, again, Open Door gets another $325 325 million. Then in September, they get another 400 million from a, a, a Japanese based bank. Then just a couple of months ago, we're recording this, they got another $200 million. So that which pumps up the evaluation of $3.7 billion. It, 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 in the past four years, Open Door has raised over a billion dollars. Actually, my math says 1.5 billion. My, this is a money play, gang. This is not a good thing for homeowners. It's there's all of this investing is just getting pumped into this because it's the it's the disruptor. It's the the new thing. This may be the the ball we hit the ball out of the park type of investment, but I anticipate these companies will go out of business. This model cannot sustain. This is a money play. Now let me let me show you some more here thoughts and facts. First of all. As traditional real estate agents, our job is to bring buyers and sellers together. Buyers buy a house because it's not an investment to them, right? They're buying to build memories, to raise a family. They're not buying a house, they're buying a home. So there's a feeling that goes into a buyer buying a property, okay? So buyers are different from investors. Investors look at buying a property to make a profit. So obviously, if you want to make a profit, you've got to, <laughs> what, what's that commercial here? Buy low, sell high. So their commitment is to get the best possible deal so they can flip it to make a profit. Nothing wrong with that. I buyers though are investors. As a matter of fact, it is ingenuous, ingenuous to call them I buyers. So you're going to see me talk to them. I'm not going to refer to them as I buyers anymore. If I do, I slip because actually they are not buyers. These are people, they're not moving into the house. They're not raising a family. They don't, they, they don't care about the school district. The only reason why they care about it is if they can, to other real buyers who do care about the school district, care about the neighborhood. These I buyers, these companies are investors and that's, we've got to change the language to the truth. So inve I investors are offering way less than what we can sell the uh, what we can sell the homeowner's house for. So they're not going to pay what we can possibly get them and I'm going to show you and validate that. The longer I investors and, and I'm just going to say this again, yes, we call them the the language, the branding, the marketing, the money they pumped into this. They're calling themselves I buyers. We're seeing articles in our industry left and right about these disruptors called I buyers. I want my students to correct people. These are not buyers the, in the traditional sense. They are investors. Their commitment is to flip the property. Therefore, the correct term is I investors. The longer an I investor holds a property, the more it cuts into their profit. Therefore, they have to resell it at a below value to sell it quickly. All right, now. Let me just give you a, a, an example. And this is something that maybe you can explain to a homeowner because this is a powerful um, concept that homeowners may not really recognize. Let's say the homeowner buys their home for 400,000 and they put 10% down. That means they have a mortgage of $360,000. Okay, let's say a few years go by, whatever it is, don't get hung up. Um, there's the point here I'm making, like we don't know how much the house is gonna go up, what market it is, what part of the United States. But let's just say, well, however long they're in the house, the house is now worth 450,000. And 
Of course, their mortgage probably has come down a tad depending on how long it's been, but let's go with the original mortgage amount because that's not the point that I'm trying to make here. So we're gonna stick with that original amount. That means at this point, this homeowner now has equity of $90,000. Okay, now let's say they sell it to, oops, I called it, I didn't correct this slide. They sell it to the I buyer, the I investor at, um, 405,000. I use 10% as the reduction on what these uh, I investors are willing to do, but I'm seeing them even greater uh, discounts. And um, But let's I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say they offer 10%. They're willing to buy the property for 10%. So for a homeowner, they think, okay, I'm selling it for 10% less. Yeah, but that's not really what's happening here. Because if the value of the property is actually 450000 that means the homeowner is giving away $45,000 of their equity. Well, if you remember that other number there, their equity is actually 90000 So if we take their 90000 and minus $45,000 they are giving away, they're actually coming down not 10%, but 50% of their equity they're giving away. Can you imagine a homeowner, uh, not a homeowner, a human being, they make an investment in a stock and their, their money goes down by 50%. Their retirement fund goes down 50%. That would, that would destroy people. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now, <clears throat> I investors are representing their best interest. Their focus is making the most money that they can from the seller. I, I love the ads and the advertising they have on their websites to make it look like, hey, we're here to help you. We're here to, we're gonna help you with a quick sale and we make it so wonderful and it's a great experience. They even use the word experience and in some of their advertising, it's so wonderful. Yeah, they care about flipping the property to make a profit. They don't have any love for this homeowner. We represent the seller's best interest. We, as licensed agents in our state, we have a legal, a fiduciary responsibility to put the homeowner's needs ahead of our own. Our, the homeowner's needs above everything and anything. That's what a homeowner hires, a licensed agent. They are hiring somebody who's looking out for their back. They've got their back. That is not what these I investors are. The I investors are looking out for what's best for them, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with this. It, it's great if an investor can make an investment and make a profit, da, 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 da. But, but there's a, a lot of ingenu, ingenuous things here that, that we need to communicate to these homeowners. They are using misleading facts and in, and in certain cases, they're actually outlaw, they're just lying and I'm gonna call it the way it is. The good news for us as real estate professionals, what I notice in going through all of their websites, they are actually, the I investors are actually validating how, how valuable a 6% commission is paying to a licensed agent. When I show you the numbers in just a minute, you're going to see that it would make so much more sense to hire an agent and pay them 6% than to do anything else. Most of these sales, and I've already said this before, most of these sales are homeowners who contacted these I investors first before an agent did. Therefore, we need to educate our community, our homeowners in the marketplace where I, I investors are popping up and explain to them, no, 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 this is not a good deal for you. Now, finishing up our good news, this should be an easy concern to handle on a listing appointment. When I show you the actual numbers, from their website compared to what we do this will be so easy for you to communicate it um, to the homeowners as i said earlier i don't think this model is going to last this is a temporary thing but actually while it's happening there's a lot of good that's going to come out of it because i think it's going to help um, the more we can get the word out the more it actually shows wow realtors do really have our backs uh, realtors uh, real estate agents really are um, for out for our best interest right and um you can offer if <laughs> the best thing you can do for a homeowner if a homeowner is adamant about uh selling to an i buyer when you see these numbers you could actually say to the homeowner all right you know what don't sell to the this i investor 
um, be, take get whatever number they give you. I'll give you an extra 10% above what they tell you. And then I'll sell the property after I own it. Minus expense is whatever profit there is. When I flip it, I'll split it with you. So it, it, you, it, you can actually, if you wanted to, use the I investors offer to still help that homeowner get more money if they're animate about it, match everything, do a little bit better. I'm not going to go into that and teach that in this uh, presentation, but <laughs> I'm seeing some real estate brokers who've caught on to this, that, that that makes better sense for the homeowner. All right, let's start with Open Door. Yeah, so Open Door, uh, great website. Um, you know, give us your address and um, this is it. So everything I'm going to show you is from their website. In some cases, I copied and pasted it. I did not edit it, but I want it was make it easier for you to see it. So this is one of their frequently asked questions on Open Doors website. It said that your next question is probably, okay, but how is an iBuyer going? It's an investor, but okay. So ingenuous. Okay, but how is an iBuyer going to give me a competitive offer, then turn around and sell my home at a competitive price and still stay in business? So uh, glad you asked. So they're actually telling in this question, yes, this is our model. Our model is to make you an offer, a competitive offer, <laughs> a competitive offer for us, um, turn around, flip it, and sell it to somebody else uh, for a profit. Okay, so here's their explanation. And this is really um, so not honest. While each iBuyer has a different approach to this question, our business model is fee-based. We want to pay a fair market price and charge a service fee similar to an agent's commissions uh, in a traditional sale. Our fee averages between 6 and 7 across our markets, but it can be lower or higher based on how long we estimate it will take to sell your home. Okay, so let me be clear about, and you'll see the highlights that I made, and this is where this is ingenuous, and in my opinion, this is just a lie, okay? Because the fee base, when you say something is a fee base, like if you go to an attorney and uh, one of my properties, we, we have a legal thing that the attorney has to do. And in this case, given the legal thing, my attorney said, all right, this is a flat fee. Yeah, you pay me X amount of dollars and we don't keep track of hours and that's all there is. If, if let's say you wanted to sell your car and um, I was going to sell it for $10,000 and you wanted me to do it for you. So I'll say, sure, I'll sell it for you and um, just give me a flat $500. See, that's fee-based. But as soon as you have a commission related to the, so the fee you're going to pay fluctuates based on the sale, that is not fee-based. That is commission-based. So let me reword the honesty, the, like being honest about what it is. While each iBuyer has a different approach to this question, our business model is commission-based. We want you to pay uh, we want to, sorry, we want to pay, I'm going to reword this. We want to pay as little as possible and charge you a, a commission similar to an agent's commission. Our commission averages between six or seven percent across the markets, but it can actually be lower. It could even be a higher commission. That's the honest expression here. The service we provide is similar is, is, a, is a simpler sale. Okay, that's also ingenuous. The service we provide is a simpler sale. Um, this part here, we get the certainty of a competitive offer. Yes, for them, it's better for them. Uh, you can avoid months of showings. Well, um, you can do that with a real estate agent too if you price the property to sell. Um, usually you need more showings because you're getting a higher price. And you control when you move. Y yeah, okay, so um, so you're saying that a homeowner selling to you, the, the iInvestor, um, that they get to control when they move. So, and they don't, in a traditional sale? <laughs> well, that's not true. Uh, in a traditional sale, the seller gets to always say when the, when it works for them. They, they dictate the terms. As a matter of fact, what you're going to see is them saying that the homeowner, that last sentence, you control when you move. I'm going to stick with you're in control. You're going to see, gang, as I explain the rest of this process, 
when a homeowner sells to these I investors, they're actually giving up a tremendous amount of control. You'll see that in a minute. Now, this is open doors. Uh, this is their, uh, wow. Every time I see this, it just drives me just a tad crazy because there's there's so many inaccuracies. This is on their website and we're gonna break this down, okay? So first of all, they're saying that Open Door is going to offer and pay the same exact price that a real estate agent will put it on the market for. Well, if that was true, <laughs> I'd say sell it to Open Door then. If Open Door is willing to pay the price that an agent would list it for and they're going to pay and close in the next 30 days, pff, go for it. Then, then it's a good deal for the homeowner. But obviously the model of Open Door and all the other I investors is to buy low and sell high. So if that's the case, then actually the listing price with, on a traditional sale with a real estate agent would probably be, I'm going to go with that 10% model roughly. In this case, it's actually a little bit uh, less than a 10% discount. Um, so 220 with a real estate agent, 200 selling it with open door. Now, they say here, and, and, and I can argue these too, that the average days to close the transaction is 10 to 60. With an agent, it's 50. You know, that depends on a lot of things, right? It depends if the MLS price and what they listed the agent with, how aggressive the price is. So, you know, I'm not going to split hairs on that. Um, they're saying it'll take 10 days for an agent to uh, prep and stage the home. Yeah, only if you need to, and they don't have to. Those are suggestions. I mean, so that's not a given. That's They're making it like that's all the time, right? And the average number of showings is 10. I don't know. Uh, you know, I would, if the homeowner is going to sell for more money. See, here's a concept about marketing. Here's how it works is uh, how you get the highest possible price is you want to create demand for the property. The more demand there is for the property, people fighting for the property, well, that drives the price up. Which is better for a homeowner? To negotiate with one person who wants to buy the house or to negotiate with 10 people who want the house? Where do you think the homeowner is going to be more in control? Where do you think the homeowner... As a matter of fact, it, by, by negotiating with one buyer, that buyer is in more control. When there's a lot of showings and a lot of interest and a lot of buyers wanting to buy that, it actually drives the price. It puts the homeowner in a better negotiating position. So to me, this number of showings, 10 showing, oh my gosh, I hope it's 20, 30, and 40. That's what I hope for the homeowner. <laughs> so I don't see that as a bad thing. Now they're calling their um, average open door service charge 7.7. .7. Now I want you to notice what they said in their frequently asked questions. Do you remember what they said in their frequently asked questions? They said the average service fee, which is actually commission, was six to seven. You know, if you were to take six to seven and create an average, you know how to do an average. You take six plus seven, that's 13. Divide 13 by the two numbers and that gives you six and a half. So six to seven, the average on that would actually be six and a half. Where did the 7.7 .7 come in because in here they're being more honest because they're actually charging eight nine ten you'll see in one case eleven and a half percent in a minute so going with their 7.7 .7 as their average commission and us is six well you can see that already right there we are less as a real estate agent okay this uh this is totally not true estimated seller's concession so they're saying that as a given on every transaction on a traditional home sale, a homeowner is going to pay a seller's concession at 2%. Now, real estate professionals, real estate agents listen to this, you know, right? That number one, the 2%, the seller's concession is not always done. Number two, whenever we do put a, a seller's concession into the transaction, that is after the selling price. That that seller's concession is added on top of the purchase price and the mortgages and the bank Banks are totally okay with it. So in other words, the homeowner is not paying 2% out of their pocket to sell their house. That is, that is built into the price after the agreed upon negotiated price that works for the homeowner. There's, this is another like, wow, just drives me crazy on the inauthenticity of this, what they're putting out there. Estimated home ownership and overlap. First of all, that's not even clear as to what it means, but I had to look into it. I, this is what they meant. What they're saying is that on every traditional home sale, when a homeowner works with a real estate agent, they've already purchased another 
another home. And so therefore they're making mortgage payments on the new home plus their existing home. And so they've come up with this, I don't know where they got 1% that that's costing the homeowner another 1% to own two homes because they're overlapping. <sighs> okay. No, not true. All right. Now, so re repairs needed. So that's a wash. I'm not even going to address that, but you're going to see something interesting on how they do their repairs. So actually when we take out, get rid of the seller's concessional lie and the 1% and all the other stuff that, yeah, but we're going to, I'm sorry, let's leave their numbers, right? So their numbers are, uh, uh, 184, six versus ours, 182. So based on this, the homeowner is going to net $2,600 more. Wow, that is so great. Open door is, is going to give this homeowner in this example an extra $2,600. That is so awesome if it was true. Um, when you take out the other commission, the other made up numbers uh, with no facts behind it. So it's really 6%. So if we take 6% off of the 220, because we marketed the house, we gave it exposure, we gave more buyers, we drove the price, buyers who are buying with emotion not to flip the property because we sold it at a higher price. We sold it for the fair market price and we get paid a 6% commission. And um, that actually nets the homeowner $206,800 because of our hard work. And you know what's really awesome about this? We're spending our money, our time, our energy doing open houses, advertising, public open houses, brokers open houses, all the stuff that we're doing, photos, yard sign, and the homeowner doesn't pay out of their pocket because they only pay us unless we get the job done. So they wound up getting $206,800, and that's a difference of $22,200. You know, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but if it took an extra 10 to 40 days for me to make an extra $22,000 on this investment or on my home, I would wait the extra 40 days. But wait, there's more. So here's how they explain. Now, this is how it's so lovely how, what we're going to do for you, Mrs. Hana Hana, we're going, your home expert, you see the first guy there the, the, with the arms crossed, your home expert, he's an expert, is going to pre prepare an offer with market data and the unique information you provided us. Yes. So in other words, this investor is going to tell you what your house is worth. <laughs> Hello. Okay. I would not trust the person who's trying to talk me down to get the best deal for themselves. I wouldn't really trust the validity of what they say my house is worth. Okay. Now the next part is you review your offer and associated fees when you're ready to sign your contract. Hey, so are we. We are excited to grab your property out from under you. Now, what it's saying here. You review your offer as agents, you know that it, what we do in, in working with homeowners, it's the homeowner who writes the contract. So when we put a buyer and seller together, it's the homeowner who creates the contract and we give it to the buyer for the buyer to check it and sign it. So in, in our, when we work with our clients, the homeowner is in the driver's seat. They're not giving up control. Not in this case, in this case, they're writing the contract. So they're in control. And I got to tell you something, with over a billion dollars pumped into this, uh, this one company, I'm sure they got some really good attorneys. And I'm sure those attorneys that created that contract is not a contract designed for the seller's best interest. I'm sure it's for their own. Now, we schedule your free home assessment. Oh, that's great. So after I've signed the contract, you're going to give me a free home. I'm not going to paying for the home. No, we've got it because we're going to check through your house and then look at it, any repairs that we think we need to make so we can make more of a profit. And not only that, when we come up with this invoice of repairs, we're going to give it to you and you got to pay us to fix your property for us to make the profit. But don't worry, we're gonna take those repair costs and just take it out of your closing. So at the closing, you'll get less than what we agreed to originally. Isn't that, this is, this is, isn't this wonderful? This is the worst thing to happen to homeowners, gang. This, let me show you, this is a, this is a really fuzzy bad shot because another agent from another market, because I'm in New York, we don't have, uh, this I investor thing, and I can tell you, we probably will never let it in. <laughs> It'll never happen. But this, 
this uh, this was in one of the cities where this is happening, right? And this is a screenshot from an agent. Now look what it says. It says open door experience. <laughs> it's an open door experience. Not a, it's a commission, but they're calling it open door experience. It's I wow, I feel like I'm going to Disney. It's wonderful. And then in addition, there's another five and a half percent market risk fee. I don't know what that means. I guess it's not a very good market and it's very risky for them. So they gotta take down another five and a half percent on the property. So in other words, this offer that this agent playing around just to see how this this I investor thing work they said all right they got an offer for three hundred forty thousand, which is actually less than what the house is worth plus they're going to ask this person to pay an 11 and a half percent commission to buy their house at a discounted price this is just any I, 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 when you see this it makes absolutely no sense that any homeowner would do this it's it's horrific now let's go to offer offer pad offer pad now, what I love about OfferPad here, so we're going to talk about their website. What I love about the, this homepage, I love the they're representing diversity. You know, I, I just love the diversity. Now, when I clicked on the All About Us, after I'm on this page of diversity, this is uh, the page that I was brought to. Now, I, I it's hard for, see, see the diversity? The diversity, you see that? It's interesting. Um, I don't know, when I clicked on this, I felt like I was, it was one of those, uh, 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 um, uh, like a frat house uh, yearbook. Um, and uh, I'm sure these are really great guys. As a matter of fact, I did look into these guys. I, I didn't know these guys. Some of these are real. these guys have a lot of experience in flipping properties, raising money, venture capital. This is a money play. You know, this is, they they really know how to work the numbers uh, to their best interest. So let's take kind of look at this, um, uh, what their page. So we've got, tell us about your house. Our analysts will go to work. <laughs> Our analysts will go to work <laughs> for you. We're going to, we use a powerful algorithm, you know, and we're going to tell you how much you're, we're willing to pay you. So again, you have the buyer telling you what the house is worth. Uh, um, all right. So then you get, should you, if you stay local, we give you a free, we're going to move you. It's free. <laughs> yeah, of course, because we're making so much money on you because you just gave your house away. Again, we're going to send you the contract. So don't, don't, don't you write the contract. Don't worry. No, we got this handled. We got, we've, we've, we got a guy, great contract for us. Uh, that we're going to ask you to sign. Um, <laughs> offer pad will perform an on-site home inspection so we can come up with all the expenses that we expect you to pay for so that way we can make more of a profit. Uh, again, this is so ingenuous. Sellers are often asked to pay concessions to offset buyer closing costs. Yes, it is true that sellers' concessions are designed to help buyers. But gang, it's, we need to explain to a homeowner that that's, to me, this is an outright lie. They're making it, seem as though, first of all, that it's often that they're paying out of their pocket. No, the accurate, the accurate way of saying this is that what often will occur from a marketing standpoint is whatever the price is agreed upon, it will be increased by about 2%. So that way they um, can get their closing costs covered through their financing without them having to pay it out of their pocket. So this is, you know, actually they're calling it a seller's concession. The really thing, what's really happening here, it's a buyer's concession. There's a buyer, it's for the benefit of the buyer and it doesn't cost the seller anything. Now let's look at their offer pad. So this is their, how they lay it out. And, and same thing, the ingenuous, like, okay, offer pad is going to, <laughs> offer pad is going to, um, Oh, I just noticed something here. I'll go to it in a second. Um, wow, wow, this is crazy. So ch check this out. So first of all, they're saying OfferPad is going to pay the same amount of money that an agent is going to sell the house for. 
again, if that's true, they should absolutely sell to this I investor, okay? But that's not what's happening. So let's go with that 10% model. So we'll probably sell it for 10% more than what the I, bought, the I investor is willing to pay for it. But you know what I just noticed, and I apologize. You see the 235 under offer pad? Do you see their commission that they're calling a service fee, but it's a commission is $17,000? I didn't do the math on this before, but if you look at ours, at 6%, it's 14,000. So actually, just if I don't go any further on this math, what OfferPad is saying on their site is we're gonna pay you for less, we're gonna pay you less than what your house is worth and you're gonna pay us a, a commission higher than what an agent would charge. Wow, that just blows my mind that any homeowner would think this is a good deal. It's not, it's totally, they're losing money left and right. Here's the. Here's how I would say this to a homeowner. Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, if you had um, an open house and you had a buyer come in and the buyer says, oh, I wanna buy your house, this is my, uh, my family and uh, we're very excited, we'd love to buy your house, we're gonna offer you 10% uh, less than what your house is worth and we want you to pay us a 7%, because that's probably what that number is, 7% commission fee to buy your house. <laughs> now, just on the surface, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, would you sell to that buyer? If a buyer came to you and said, I wanna pay you 10% less than what you want, and I want you to pay me 7% commission on top of that uh, to buy your house, would you sell it to them? And the homeowner would say, of course not. Well, that's exactly what this is. But wait, there's more. After we agree on the price, then uh, and we're in contract, then I'm gonna have my engineer, my guy, come look at it, make a list of all the things that we feel that we need to have done. And after um, that's done, I will give you that invoice in closing and deduct that from the number. So now I want you to pay for the repairs for me to make more profit when I flip it. All right, let's continue. Okay, so our commission, if we're going to be at 6% on 260, that will raise that commission at 15.6. So it's still less than what OfferPad's commission is. The seller's concession is not coming out of this number, so that's not true. There, This made up overlap home ownership cost, blah, blah, that's not always true. And if that is true, there's a way to fix that. If a homeowner is about to own two properties, gang, you know what we do. We just lower that selling price, that list price. Instead of 260, we maybe make it 250 and it creates more buyer activity. Like there's a way to still make sure that homeowner's not owning two homes. So, but we're, you see, we're licensed trained agents committed to serving the seller because we have the seller's best interest in our mind. Whereas with OfferPad, they have their best interest in mind because they do not have a fiduciary responsibility or obligation to the homeowner. So that's why this is all not um, being co communicated fairly. Yeah. All right. So if we take uh, the new net now is $244,400. So by working with a real estate agent, paying at 6%, you're actually going to make an additional $27,025 based on their math. And the other thing is they're saying no worries about the cost of owning two homes. Well, again, that shouldn't be a bullet. That's um, ingenuous. Pick your own closing date. That's a lie because they do that with when, when uh, in the traditional situation. They the homeowners always determine the closing date. So and if a home and if a buyer that we're working with wants to get in the house sooner or get in the house later, yeah. So they'll the homeowner will, will still have the choice. They're in control to decide if they're going to accept that offer, accept that date. Potentially spending thousands of dollars make your home market ready and saleable also ingenuous and not accurate. Now let's talk about Zillow. Zillow is the most on Zillow's walking a, a, a tightrope here. They're the most honest in how they present their um, Zillow offer. So let's go to their frequently asked questions. And you'll see what I mean. Does Zillow represent me in the transaction or do I still need an agent? Zillow does not represent you, but we can connect you with an agent if you decide to accept our offer. If you do not accept our offer, we can refer you to one of our local partner agents who advertises on Zillow and they can provide evaluation and advice on selling your home. We strongly encourage all buyers and sellers to use a professional real estate agent. We believe an agent provides essential expertise ultimately resulting in the best outcomes for consumers. Zillow offers is no different. I'm not sure about that last sentence, what they're saying there. 
Uh, but here's Zillow is being the most honest, and you're going to see. Uh, remember those other where we showed the pricing between the I investor versus the the traditional, which is the real estate agent. Um, they have one too, and you're going to see something interesting. So. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why Zillow's got a real challenger because they have their estimate. They've got real estate agents who are using Zillow. I mean, the real estate industry that the professionals, we really have helped Zillow in a lot of ways. And um, it's become more of a partnership. When Zillow first came into the market as a disruptor, a lot of agents were really concerned. And we still have some complaints about them. But we have been able to live in harmony with them. And um, they're actually not a bad thing for us. Uh, and they want to keep our relationship. So they're going to be the most honest. Is this um, Now, with that said, the, I don't agree with this part. They said, is this like a for sale by owner transaction. Not really, they said. A FISBO home may be listed publicly and offer requires home prep, staging, or showings. That's not true always. Um, although they do say the word may, but you know, okay, and they may not. Uh, FISBO homes are typically purchased by traditional buyers who may or may not be represented by an agent and who may or may not experience See, if they're going to say may or may not, like in that first line where it says a FISBO home may be listed publicly and offer requires, often requires, see, that's why, why do you got to go there? That's not honest. It may or may not require home prep. Okay. So, um, so let me finish that sentence. Um, a typical purchase, traditional buyers who may or may not be represented by an agent or who may or may not experience financial financing issues. If you sell your home to Zillow, no prep or showings are required and your cash sell is certain on the closing date you choose. So th th I, I just don't like the whole thing because here's, here's the bottom line is if a homeowner is selling their home by owner, that means they're not selling their home by agent. So in any scenario where a homeowner who's selling their home without a licensed trained agent they are a FISBO. It doesn't matter if the buyer is from an open house, it's a buyer, it's a family, or it's an I investor like Zillow offers or offer pay. Like they're still a FISBO. The, what defines a FISBO is they have no representation from a licensed agent in that state. Okay. So I just, all right, if the seller does not have representation, they're a FISBO negotiating with a corporation is what I wrote there. Okay. Here's the this is the interesting part. How does Zillow determine the amount to offer? Will my offer price be the same as my Zestimate? <laughs> this is one of our complaints. Uh, we use this estimate as a starting point that we look at the information you provide about your home and the valuation of local real estate agents. We factor in potential costs of renovations or repairs and confirm or adjust our offer based on an in-person evaluation. So they have a very similar process to the other I investors. Um, but they're basically saying Zillow is not going to pay you for this estimate. They are paying you for less. You'll see it says that first sentence, we're using this estimate as a starting point. And then we start to pick at that number based on what you're telling us, based on what other agents. And I love how they say, based on what local real estate agents are saying, because you and I both know the biggest complaint we have about Zillow Zestimates is that they usually come in higher than what you know, we would suggest to put a house up for sale. <laughs> so now that we've been telling them, hey, Zillow, your estimates are too high. You've got to stop doing that. You got to bring those suckers down. They're like, no, no, we're good. It's good. It's accurate. It's data. And now with the Zillow offers, well, you know, we're going to use it as a starting point, And then we're going to bring in agents who we already know are going to tell us that the property should be lower in price. And then plus, we have to do repairs and we're going to offer you less than this estimate, basically. Now, this here, how do we know you're not changing this estimates, making it lower so you can buy homes more cheaply or making it higher so you can sell them for more? I mean, I, I, I think that took a lot of um, uh, courage for them to put that on there because, yeah, if I were a homeowner, I'd be thinking, are they manipulating the numbers now? You know, change the estimate. Here's what they said. This estimate is a computer generated estimate of a home's value based on millions of data points. It is a trusted tool for consumers and we take our credibility very seriously. 
Factors that can influence this estimate include homeowner updates to their home facts, the sales price of recently sold nearby homes, changes in tax assessed value, and other updates or additions to independent public data related to the home. A Zillow offer will not change this estimate. And I, I've got to tell you, I, I honestly believe that's true. I believe, I think Zillow is uh, getting into these I investors and doing the offers and making it available. I, th I forgot what the number is, but it's more than 95% of homeowners who have gone to Zillow offers has not pulled the trigger. Um, so I, I think that Zillow offers is um, uh, ex getting in because there's a lot of money coming into this play. So they have to participate for nothing, no other reason for some influx of cash. I don't know. But what I will tell you, I think they know what their business model is and what's gotten them successful and they don't want to mess with it. So um, yeah, so let's go on to the to uh, this last one. Will the cost of repairs be factored into the offer? So I'm not going to read their whole thing. The bottom line is the same concept. They're going to want the homeowner to do repairs so they can flip it to make a profit. Now, here's the thing that I want to show you that's really honest, and I really give uh, Zillow some real kudos. They're being real honest with their numbers. They're saying, look, if we buy your house, we're going to pay you less than what a, a licensed agent can buy your house, uh, sell your house for. Uh, if an agent can sell for two twenty nine, dollars we're going to maybe buy it for two hundred one three hundred. dollars So they're being really honest. You'll notice that, and again, you may even want to take this, this slide and show it in comparison to the other I investors to show the ingenuous how they were being ingenuous about how their price was the same as our price, uh, the real estate agent's price. Zillow's showing the difference. Okay. So then you've got the 6% commission, estimated closing costs. So with an agent, the home the homeowner would net 211,000, almost 212. But with Zillow, you know, we're going to pay you less. You're going to wind up with 198,300. So the difference there is uh what is that? 211, 13, about $13,000 going with an agent, you're going to make $13,000 more. And you know what's interesting though? What the one thing that's different with Zillow compared to the I investors? Do you see a commission on their side disguised as a service fee? No. They're not charging commissions. The other guys are. And um and uh, um, so I think that's that's great that they're not doing that, that they're being honest about. It. So I think Zillow is the most authentic, honest, uh truthful of these people. Now, Here's the points to make to your homeowner. And if I were talking to a homeowner, here's how I'd say it to Mr. and Mrs. Hanahan. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. There have been, I don't know about you, but I seem to get emails every other week about some lost relative in Uganda that just passed away. And I'm, I'm going to make a million dollars if I wire them uh, $5,000 to cover taxes or something. So you've got to be careful uh, uh, with, with if it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. These are not i buyers they're investors looking out for their interests not yours as a licensed agent my obligation is to put your needs ahead of my own i have a legal responsibility to represent you the i investor does not um you know you're basically with an i investor you're basically selling your home based on what they're telling you your house is worth you just can't trust that you know, when I think about when they keep talking about a seller's concession, showing it as if it's coming out of your pocket, which that's clearly a, a lie, you know, what else are they not being truthful about? And that's what you really got to, that's to me, the one of the biggest red flags. They are buying a flipper for a profit and they're making you pay them a commission to pay you less for your house. It's just quite mind blowing. And not only are they charging you one commission, in some cases, they're actually charging you two commissions. You know, they're calling one a service fee and the other one a market risk fee. If I just go with the lowest number here of 6% and then 2%, they're actually asking you to pay them an 8% commission, right? To buy your house at a discounted price. Yeah, this is what the worst thing that happen for homeowners. They're making you pay for the repairs even after all that too. So that way they can even make more money on you. So the most concerning thing is you're putting them in control. You're taking all of the, the power, giving it to them. They control you. They control the process. They write the contract. They tell you the repairs. They tell you the price. 
you are giving up total control and that's just the worst place for you to be. I want to help you get the most money, not sell it for the least. So anyway, gang, I hope this helped you in understanding how this iBuyer um, uh, is the worst thing to happen to homeowners. And we really need to get this message out to all of our local homeowners so that way we prevent them from, um, we want them, hey, listen, not prevent them. They can go talk to these other uh, companies, but we want to give them the truth so that way they can make an educated decision, right? All right, I hope this helps you. Our company is here to support you in any way that we can. Um, if you need something for us to help you, if this is a real issue in your marketplace, our phone number is there, 631-929-5555. And uh, the powerprogram.com is for our students. And Daryl Speaks is uh, my company website. So DarylSpeaks.com. All right. Thanks, gang. Have a wonderful day. And um, I look forward to uh, talking to you guys in, in person. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.